uh, one of the main fields that you are uh, working right now and, and you have a, a very interesting paper is about uh, how background music impact in diversity groups. So um, for me, it's interesting the, the different uh, relation that you find between how the social enterprise uh, use marketing and the different challenges that they used to have. Uh, it reminds me a little bit about some B2B companies because at the end of the day, the budgets is a kind of limitations in B2B companies, especially right. when we are talking about marketing. Right. So uh, would you mind to share a little bit about uh, some of the findings th that, you, yeah. that you have from this analyze that you have been working? Sure, sure. Just to give you a little backdrop, uh, I am a filmmaker. Uh, I've made four films. And uh, so um, as a director, and I write my own scripts, um, uh, when you uh, write a script, uh, then you think about all the different things that will be added on later. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only during production where you have acting and lighting and so on, but also in post-production where you have uh, editing going on, uh, you have coloring going on, and a particular interest of late has been the, the music that is put in. Uh, so uh, it's like marketing in, in, in many respects because uh, filmmaking is about storytelling and marketing should be about storytelling. It's about absolutely trying to send a message about a product, about a company. Uh, and so in marketing, we always talk about uh, concept uh, and, and then uh, which is uh, what the message is about and, uh, but a concept only remains a concept unless it's supported by good strategy and especially by good action. So in that respect, it's a filmmaking because uh, in filmmaking, we talk about vision, uh, which is what the message of the director is. Mm -hmm. uh, then we talk about ultimately action. So, uh, a good movie is where the vision and the um, action are aligned. It's seamlessly integrated. But yes. a poor movie is where, regardless of the great vision that the director had, uh, if it's not implemented with proper action, <clears throat> and again, I remind your viewers that it's not just about the acting, but it's also about uh, <laughs> all the little different things that go into uh, the making of the movie, such as the, the lighting, the editing, and music. So that's uh, what I have been trying to do some research on, because uh, on the set or in post-production, I'm heavily involved with uh, the editor. When he's making the cuts, he, I I'm there with him. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm not the editor, uh, so I, I rely on experts. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I'm going to do it this way. And then I tell him, mm, maybe that's not uh, consistent with what I'm trying to convey. And, and I do the same with my compo uh, composer. And I'm very meticulous. So because uh, I actually uh, do a, uh, a temp scoring. Uh, th these are all industry jargon, but what temp scoring means is I download something on, uh, let's say, YouTube, uh, and, uh, and then I just put it in various parts of the movie. So I score my movie uh, just to get a, a rough sense of how it will feel. Uh, and then I send it over to my composer. So all of my movies have original uh, soundtrack. So uh, he gets a sense of what it is I'm trying to do. Uh, and then he composes his own thing and, and comes back to me about uh, whether or not uh, I like it, whether or not it conforms to the kind of message, the, the tone. It's not only the message, but it's also uh, the tone 
uh, of what it is I'm trying to, uh, to say. So in, in my last research, which I hope you can uh, uh, tell your uh, students uh, how to, uh, to, uh, to find it. Absolutely. I was dealing with uh, <clears throat> this, um, uh, it, it was a documentary that I had made and it was well received. Uh, and there were a lot of choices that I had to make. Uh, and one of those choices uh, was concerning the, the music. And I was happy with the music. Uh, it was composed by this composer in the US. Uh, in a way, this is kind of related to what we were talking about before uh, we started a documentary. He is um, in New York. So we did a Zoom talk, but there are a lot of uh, filmmaking specific uh, software where we can actually do something like this and actually uh, compose. So he, he will put in the music and, and uh, I, I will know the timeline of when it starts and when it ends and, uh, and uh, whether, whether there's a fade out at the end. So, so it's very technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got the hang of it very fast. So I, I will tell him, no, the, 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 the fade out is too long. Let, let's make it short and so on and so on. So, so, so I made this film and I wanted to test out from a theoretical basis as well as a uh, um, empirical basis, whether my choices had been correct. Because my vision for this movie uh, and it involved this uh, disabled work. And I had mentioned before that I'm interested in CSR. So it's about this uh, company where they only employ mentally, um, developmentally disabled people. So normally these are people who have IQs lower than seven. Okay. So I made this movie. And uh, so in the movie, I used what I thought was inspiring music, inspiring music. So I use it in my uh, classes and I'll be more than happy to send you uh, the link to that film. Uh, I also have a case uh, on this uh, uh, company. Uh, and uh, so the difference between the case and the movie is Whereas in the, uh, the case, they talk about the employees as a group. And in this film, uh, I wanted to make it personal. What I wanted to see, so I asked the company, is there someone that I can just uh, highlight? And his name is Chi Hun. Okay. And so I interviewed him and, and he was very articulate. And, uh, and I, I, I was actually very surprised with the content of the interview because he's a young man and uh, he was very honest and he knew so much about how this uh, brand was marketed because he was tell, uh, telling me not just about how the, book, uh, the, the cookies are baked, mm -hmm. but he was telling me about uh, oh, uh, uh, one of his wishes was that more people would check out the, the website, the homepage, uh, and read all the comments. And it was shocking. It was an eye opener. So the thing about filmmaking is that often it's really about uh, the filmmaker uh, learning about some subject matter. A lot of research goes into the making of a film because a film has to be authentic. So whatever film I make, I do a lot of research. So this is where my professorial training actually helps because of the research I've been doing for 30 years. Yes. So, so research is not a problem for me. So I just do a lot of research, sometimes qualitative research. Uh, so I did uh, the research for this film, but, but still uh, it hadn't prepared me for my conversations with Chihu. And I was shocked. Uh, it, it floored me that he knew about websites and word of mouth and he's using all these terms and the, the brand and so 
So I had underestimated him just because he was labeled uh, developmentally disabled. So it motivated me to Absolutely. make this film to show people that they're normal. They're normal. So, so in fact, some of them are geniuses, as you know. A sure. lot of autistic people have very high IQ, but they yes. only just can do one thing, like in Rain Man. Yes. Uh, so he was not a, a Rain Man, but nonetless, in terms of baking, he, he was an expert. He, he was an expert. So I made this film to see uh, uh, whether there might be parasocial identification. Uh, and it's a term mm -hmm. that we use in marketing, which uh, gets at whether people can um, uh, identify with themselves, see mm -hmm. themselves through someone. Usually it's talked about with celebrities, like with a uh, movie star or with uh, uh, professional athletes like LeBron James or maybe Cristiano Ronaldo. And, uh, mm -hmm. But here we're talking about someone who is disabled. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see, even for people, and he, he tells people in the film flat out, I am developmentally disabled. What it tells me is that if I want people to be, um, if they, uh, if I want them to see themselves as him, to elevate mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the viewer. Absolutely. It should be inspiring music, which is what we did. So it confirmed to me that the movie that I made was made in the right way, including in terms of the music used. Because uh, a lot of times when you make a film about disabled people, they use sad music. They use yeah. sad music. Uh, yep. And it promotes maybe the stereotype about disabled people. Yes. That, that they're yep. not like us. Because my agenda is promoting inclusivity, not just diversity, but mm -hmm. inclusivity. Absolutely. They're, they're part of us. They're like us. And the thing about Absolutely. disability is that none of us are free from becoming a disabled person, either by age or an yes. unexpected accident. It's not something that you're born with, a lot of people. Absolutely. A random yeah. disease. So. Yeah. Yeah. So a visiting scholar in uh, Scotland at the University of St. Andrews. So I was uh, actually visiting in the film studies department. And um, one professor uh, showed this uh, project by uh, Gaia Garcia uh, Bernard. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's uh, a very famous uh, uh, actor and director. Yes. He's very close with Diego Luna, who I like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so he, he made a movie called Who is Diane Cristal? Diane, who is Diane Cristal? It's a doc again. Uh, it's one way to check whether uh, my bias as a filmmaker, because we all, we all have a bias. Professors have a bias, because yes. uh, what we want to teach, uh, again, the, the, a lot of it is just us. Yes. So that's why we have to read uh, teachers' evaluations to, 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 uh, conf uh, to uh, uh, verify whether we're making Absolutely. contact with our Absolutely. Students. So this was a very interesting uh, cause because there's a serious uh, uh, immigration, uh, illegal immigration mm -hmm. uh, border crossing that's still going on. And we only recently found out about the 50 people who died, uh, died in that truck. It's very yes. sad. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, this movie um, uh, talks about that. Uh, and, uh, but from their Nunapi, mm -hmm. not the Nunapi of, uh, Texas Rangers, uh, in the U.S. Yes, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. This one, uh, who went, I think it was from Guatemala or it was some, um, yes. Yeah. 
Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're right, Professor, because he, this, this also used to happen uh, with, uh, as you mentioned, with music is one of the components that used to make these kind of stereotypes of, of different yeah. cultures or different group of people. But, but also, for example, even the, the illumination and, and the photography of the films, that's another aspect that uh, sometimes uh, used to be used without the, the new NLP scope. And we could see, for example, if Latin America countries uh, are in a, in a Hollywood movie, you could see a sepia yeah. tone or, or yeah. a, a shiny tone if there are, yeah. uh, you know, uh, European yeah. uh, countries. So even that kind of perspective uh, make a, yeah. a kind of distortion in the audience. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. And, and even the portrayal, uh, I think yes. I, I cringe. I mean, I... Uh, I mean, I, I, I've watched Narcos and I've watched Ozark. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, again, I mentioned Diego Luna, who's I think one of the producers of uh, uh, Narcos. And so uh, it's based I think on so. fact. Yes. Yeah, yes. It, it's based on fact, but sometimes, uh, I mean, as a filmmaker, uh, there's a keyword called representation. So representation, mm -hmm uh is uh, about again how someone is shown and uh, and whether that is uh authentic and uh so may maybe that is one part of uh what's going on but certainly the danger is that people may generalize from that mm -hmm. to everyone absolutely yeah absolutely. so so i think even if it's true, and, and I doubt <laughs> it's all true, uh, you need balance. Yes. You need balance. Give us a like about this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again and see you soon.